trees then desperate need a pruning but they get loads of apples on every year this little one a lovely little oh that's come off my hand they're lovely little sweet ones and i think those ones are more like an apple not too sure don't know what type that or anything however we're not here for the eating value today it's just to pick up a, the windfalls off the ground and we're going to put them on the compost heap my brother works away so um he's picked up some apples and need an apple crumble and what have you but he's not going to be home again for another six weeks or so, so we're going to just clear these off his lawn and off his border and take them away. We've already had several bags of apples from this, by the way. I've made apple cider vinegar, which I've done a video about. And, uh, we came up yesterday and picked the load. And I'm busy just processing them and peating, freezing them for the winter. They're not going to store because they're all moth eaten and wormy.
costume. I'm going to put it on. Uh, it hasn't got much in it at the minute, but I'm going to start and try and fill it up now. Commit the putting stuff on it. Because we've got to get more compost. It's a little bit more, a little bit more. I've decided I'm just going to take these little semi-ripe tomatoes off to try and get the rest to ripen. They ripen fine just in the house on the windowsill. Um, I'm trying to force the rest of them to ripen up faster because it seems like it's a bit of a race against time now. Feeling pretty autumnal really. In the shadow now. There you go, just a tiny little handful, not anywhere near ripe, but they will ripen. And I think if I don't do this, I'm not going to get the rest of them. So these French beans are pretty much finished now. I'm just going to pick the last few beans off and then I'm going to take this plant out and put it on the compost as well. Right, well I think I've changed my mind about this. Although the beans are finished on this plant, I have remembered that I've also got, I accidentally planted a whole, well I don't know how many, a couple of runner beans in amongst them. My beans all got mixed up this year. So, if I take my French beans out, my runner beans, which aren't ready yet, are gonna just all fall on the ground and get pulled about. Uh, now I, I could pick the beans for the runner, the, the whole pods for the runner beans, but we actually like to leave the beans to beanify. Yeah, get Beanify. filled completely with beans, mm -hmm. and then we'll pick them and see if the actual beans inside. So I'm going to leave these French beans just to sit there, and they're working as a support for the for the runners. So that's a job I haven't got to do this morning. Yeah, I think it's best just to leave them really. As a support, as you say. I'll just show you these French beans and how these runner beans, runner beans. and how good they're getting. See if I can see any that have gone brown. Look at the size of that and obviously you're not going to want to eat that pod. It's tough as an old boot. Um, but inside I'm going to pick it and show you. Beans will be ready. Yeah, they will. We usually leave these to dry out completely, but you can yeah, still pick them at this stage. They're not quite ready, are they? Yeah, yeah, look at them, they're absolutely beautiful. Oh, they look all right, yeah. Look at that, yeah. could you ever see anything more beautiful than those beans? They're glorious. Look at the colours on that. I just love them, I absolutely love them. So we take them home, we just put them on the windowsill and um, or, the, or just on the sideboard usually. We've got a stash growing there now, Bolotti beans already. And they dry out, they shrink to about half the size and they don't stay such a beautiful colour, mind I have to admit. They're only this really beautiful colour when you first pick them. And then we can we'll put them in stews and casseroles and soups all through the winter. We just store them in a jar once they've dried out properly. I much prefer that because I'm not a big fan of these runner beans, even when they're small. I still find them a bit tough and hairy, to be honest. Are they what the Americans call string beans? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Of 
couple of little peas here. I'm just picking some little odds and ends to do. There's nothing major to pick. Just picking these peas as they go. Some over there as well. Brought you along here to see my little squash patch. Look at that, isn't that so wonderful and delightful to see? Here's my pride and joy. My giant Uchikikuri baby. I don't think you can tell how big it is, a bit hard to tell. That's my hand. Can't wait to get these picked. I'll show you uh, this giant marrow here. It's a huge one. I think it's just a normal courgette plant, but it's been left to go. This actually isn't our plant, this is somebody else's in another part of the allotment. And I'll show you, these are the uh, big marrows up here. Can you see in there? There's half a dozen of them. I don't think they're going to get picked by whoever's planted them. This is the apple tree in our allotment. It's a Cox's Orange Pippin. It's supposed to be a miniature variety, but we've got a lot of nice apples on there. And they're not quite ready. The truth is we should probably have pulled some of the fruit off to give the tree a better chance as it's so young um, I couldn't bring myself to do it so I'm hoping to get a little handful of apples off there Just going to take off these outer leaves, obviously, the horrible of the hens are going to have, and uh, hopefully, I'll make some sauerkraut with the rest. We made it a very small batch yesterday, that's a nice hard head, but look at that horrid slug on there. Cabbages seem to have all the nasty bugs working down in between all the leaves. See, there you go again. So you've got to keep going and going until you've got almost no cabbage left. It's a nice hard head that. You'd think nothing would get down. Can you know, just wash it off or wash the bugs off now? Well, they're like in the leaves, mm. like tucked in, you know. Keep squishing it up, look at that. Dear root, horror thing. Oof. Must be some way to fight that, you know, to come back. I mean, they're worms and slugs, so netting's not going to help. Anybody got any ideas? How would you stop all that happening? The things that have affected my cabbages have been slugs and worms that come up from the ground or live in the ground so any kind of netting is not going to help me with that. And short of using some horrible pesticide you don't yeah, want to do that. you're not going to do that but it's not a cute little one, nothing in there really. Get it? 
wormstone eat maybe cabbage. It's, maybe it's warm and moist in there or well, something. Well, it will be, but slugs all over that. A lot it's of a slugs. a waste of a cabbage, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not, I cannot risk getting a slug though to eat them. slugs and that I'll have to take it to them and give it a good going over but there's plenty there for the hens at least at least the hens are happy happy little hens yes That's so good <laughs> well, go and get them back in. Get in. Margaret, look at it. Margaret, you're a very naughty hen. Go on. I'll pick you up, babe. Pick her up. She's really nice to pick up, you know. <laughs> doesn't look happy. <laughs> Shh, oh, stop it. An egg. They're out again. Oh. <laughs> it's you two, you rebels. Go on, shoot them in. Come on, get in. I'll show you this. This is our uh, main crop potatoes, Picasso they are. I think they're just about there really, all the foliage is dying right down. But I'm going to leave them in as long as I can, maybe another couple of weeks and then I'll show you when we take these up and see what we'll get. Thank you for watching our video, hope you enjoyed it. Um, join us next time, you can give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked it. Bye!